Okay, chapter 16 is about investments and the accounting treatment of investments. So maybe we buy some stocks and bonds of other companies to make a little bit more money than sticking our extra cash into our bank account. So just a little quick review. Remember our income statement is revenue minus expenses. It covers a period of time, shows whether we made money or lost money. Balance sheet has on the left hand side our assets, things that we own like bonds and stocks, and liabilities, things that we owe, and equity, the difference between our assets and our liabilities. So the big thing about bonds and stocks is how do we account for unrealized gains or losses. In other words, while we own these bonds, they may go up in value. If interest rates go down, bond prices go up. How do we account for that, if at all? So in a little bit of a violation of our uh, cost principle, we do account for such things. Depends on what kind of bonds they are, if they are trading bonds. In other words, if they are bonds that we bought with the intention of buying and selling to try to make money and we're actively managing these bonds, we're going to book the interest income just like you would expect debit cash, credit interest revenue. But unrealized gains or losses, as this thing goes up and down in value, we're going to mark it up or down in value on our balance sheet and book the unrealized gains or losses as a revenue on our income statement. If on the other hand they're just what we call available for sale bonds, in other words bonds that we had the extra cash laying around and if we need the cash we'll sell the bonds those are called available for sale. We'll book the interest revenue just like before, debit cash, credit interest revenue. Unrealized gains or losses, however, are going to show up on the balance sheet in this equity account. So, for example, if the bond goes up to $1,100, interest rates go down, bond prices go up, we'll mark that bond to market over here on the left-hand side with a $100 debit, and we'll have a $100 credit over here for an unrealized gain. Your book doesn't talk about it, but you can also have hold to maturity bonds. So stocks never mature, but bonds do. In other words, they have to pay back the principal they borrowed. Book interest revenue just like we did before, debit cash, credit some interest revenue account over here. But we'll accrete or amortize to face value. So if we bought this bond for $900, over time we'll accrete that thing up until it has a $1,000 face value at the time of maturity. That's for a topic for a much more advanced accounting class, but just to be complete, I included it here. So now let's talk about stocks. Stocks don't have a maturity date, so we don't have such a thing as hold to maturity, but we do have other complications. If we own less than 20% of the stock of a company, it depends, just like it did over here, whether we're talking about a trading investment or an available for sale investment. We're going to book the dividend revenue for a trading stock just like we would for an available for sale. We're going to debit cash, credit dividend revenue. But if the stock goes up or down in value, those unrealized gains or losses are going to show up on our income statement. So we buy the share of stock for $5, it goes up to $6, but we haven't sold it yet. That $1 will be added on to our value over here in a market adjustment, and then we'll have a $1 unrealized gain over here. On the other hand, if it's an available for sale stock, in other words, we bought the stocks, we're not actively managing them, but we will sell them if we need the cash for some capital expenditure to pay some bills. We'll book the dividend revenue just like up above, debit cash, credit dividend revenue, but the unrealized gains or loss will be on the balance sheet. So again, if we bought the stock for $5, it's an available for sale investment, and it goes up to $6, we'll mark it up to $6 on the left-hand side, and that unrealized gain won't be on the income statement. It'll show up over here as an unrealized gain in our equity section of our balance sheet. If, on the other hand, we own between 20 and 50% of the shares of another company and we can exercise significant influence, we use this unusual thing called the equity method for booking that those transactions. So, we increase our stock investment by our share of net income. If we own 30% of a company, let's say, and they make $100,000 during the year, we're going to increase our asset by our share of that. 30% of $100,000 is $30,000. So we'll write up our stock investment by $30,000 and we'll book that uh, $30,000 
as revenue from our stock investment. We'll also act as if those dividends that we receive are decreasing because we're cashing out of our investment. So we'll debit cash and credit our stock investment to reflect the fact that we've been cashed out to a certain extent. If on the other hand we own over 50% of the shares of a stock of a company, we will consolidate. In other words, we'll book ourselves together as if we were one company. All right, I hope that uh, clarifies rather than mystifies chapter 16. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Thanks.